What makes a good church? Part 2. The actions of the leader. Titus 1, 6-9. An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. 1 Timothy 3, 1-7 here is a trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. What these two passages show us is that the church leader, as well as having a good theology, must also behave in a good way. Now obviously no one is sinless, Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. But there's a difference between falling into sin and sinning willingly. Everyone falls into sin, but only those who don't care about Christ sin willingly. Basically, a pastor must meet a certain level of moral goodness as laid out in Titus and 1 Timothy.